incredible rare astrolabe, astronomical object that has markings in multiple languages. A medieval astronomical instrument discovered entirely by accident has turned out to be a powerful record of cross-cultural scientific collaboration. The brass astrolabe dates back to 11th century Spain, but was subsequently engraved with annotations and amendments over the centuries in multiple languages as changing owners adapted and updated it for their own use. The object is therefore not just a rare artifact, but almost unique. A palim set sets of records changing ideas and needs of its users as the world and context changes. It, this is not just an incredibly rare object, it's a powerful record of scientific exchange between Arabs, Jews and Christians over hundreds of years, says historian, historian Frederica Gigante of University of Cambridge, who rediscovered the astrolabe and its inscriptions in an Italian museum in Verona. The Verona astrolabe underwent many modifications, additions and adaptations in its change as it changed hands. At least three separate users felt the need to add translations and corrections to this object, two using Hebrew and one using a Western language. Astrolabs are instruments that chart the heavens and have been in use for many hundreds of years. They consist of a map of the sky with rotating parts that allow users to calculate their position in time and space. It's a powerful tool, not just for navigation, but for astronomy and astrology as well. The first emerged in ancient Greece, but only through development in the Islamic world did they reach their full versatility. That versatility is on full display at the gigantic, what Gigante calls the Verona Astrolab, because it was discovered in the collection of the Fondazione Museum in Verona, likely obtained as part of the collection of noble and art collector Ludovico Moscardo, who lived in Verona in the 17th century. Gigante, who specialized in artifacts from the Islamic world in the early modern period, noticed a newly uploaded photo of the Astrolab on the museum's website and reached out to them to find out more about this. The museum did not know what it was and thought it might actually be fake. It's now the single most important object in their collection, she says. When I visited the museum and studied the Astrolab lab up close, I noticed that not only was it covered in beautiful engraved Arabic inscriptions, but that I could see faint inscriptions in Hebrew. I could only make them out in the raking light entering from a window. I thought I might be dreaming, but I kept seeing more and more, and it was very exciting, she said. Working out the provenance of an instrument, of the instrument involved careful uh, studying its features and comparing them to other astrolabs, the style of the astrolab, the engraving on the back, and the style of the calligraphy are consistent with other astrolabs made in Al-Andalus, Islamic Spain, in the 11th century. This is supported by the positions of the star pointers, which are consistent with the astrolab made in Ibrahim ibn Sa'id al-Sahli in the Spanish municipality of Toledo in 1068 AD, and this suggests that it was based on star coordinates used in the late 11th century. As for the engravings of the object, they speak of a rich cultural history. Some of the Arabic inscriptions are Muslim prayer lines and prayer names. Since astrolabs could be used for timekeeping, this suggests that at least one owner used the artifact for prayer. Another Arabic inscription reads for Ishaq, the word for Yunus, and the work for Yunus. Giganti believes that this inscription was added sometime after the astrolab was made. It's impossible to tell who Ishaq and Yunus might be, or if indeed Yunus was the one who made the astrolab, but the two names in English are Isaac and Jonas. In medieval Spain, there was a sizable Sephardic Jewish community who spoke Arabic. This inscription could mean that the astrolab spent some time there as well. The Hebrew inscriptions include translations for astrological constellations, which is also very telling, Gigante says. These Hebrew editions and translations suggest that at a certain point in the, ob the object left Spain or North Africa and circulated among the Jewish diaspora community in Italy, she said, where Arabic was not understood and Hebrew was used instead. 
Finally, someone at some point had scratched latitude corrections on both sides of the astrolab in Western Arabic numerals, the ones we use today, probably for a Latin or Italian speaker. Interestingly, though, some of the corrections appeared to be wrong. Many objects that make their way to us down the centuries have many tales that we'll never know. That's also the case for the Verona Astrolab, but its scratchings and engravings offer us a window into its history that very few artifacts can offer. It's a spectacular discovery that speaks to years, if not centuries, of cultural mixing and exchange. This object is Islamic, Jewish, and European. They can't be separated, Gigante says. The research was published in Nuncius, and this is on Science Alert by Michelle Starr. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Finally, support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.